Okay, another question I have is um, not just current property owner rights, but future property owner rights. If somebody comes in and asks you for money for developing an area of land, maybe they have uh, TV rings or some mounts or something, you're just going to willingly let that go back if the future property owner wants to opt back out? That's something that I would like to talk about a little bit. Yeah. What was your name again? Karina. Karina? Okay. Person. But one of the one of the topics that Sandy mentioned was that somebody opted in that they should be allowed to opt out at any time. And when we're thinking about this, how the Harris Center would work, and again, it's not formalized yet, it's just my concept because I've worked on other entities that, that give grants and technical assistance. And so the technical assistance is not a good you give money to somebody. Um, for the purpose of saying, and they specify, I want to do, I want to do, um, you know, do something involving heritage tourism on my land because I have this feature and money will be given to them. And then a year later they say, well, thanks for fixing up my place, and um, you know, where where nobody else is going to be allowed in, and I'm not, but I'll keep the money. And then at that point, I think we're going to have to have agreements drafted when we give a grant that if they don't follow through on it or if they don't, um, you know, if they aren't going to do what they're going to do, we don't need to be wasting money and giving it away to people that are just looking us off. Okay, and but is there going to be a time limit? I don't know. I mean, we're way far away from drafting that. I have seen where economic development, like, for example, has gone for some because they said, I'm going to put in 20 jobs, we're going to do this and that. And you know what? The money gets spent on the real job. So this isn't anything we're interested in. We don't we would, they call that a co op You know, when you were okay. you, you retained or something. But uh, you know, that, that's a ways out that we would draft something like that. There was mention that, that on the feasibility study, some of the inventory was dropped and some new ones were added in. Why does that happen? What I was saying is that uh, some, some, I believe that, uh, that that list that is in the feasibility study here was uh, uh, not all the sites are the same as they were. That's okay. All. Um, Things have changed. Um, I, I was I'm curious, I'm trying to make notes, and I, I'm, I'm on the previous issue, what, what was your recommendation? What would you like to see in the management? As far as what? Uh, uh, <laughs> on the clawback thing that, uh, that you and Sarah were discussing, or the you know, future, future owners. Future owners, I, I'd like to see the future owners have, a, you know, retain the rights to that property, just as the present owner would. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, the other question I had is you said something about being sustainable in 15 years. What if that doesn't happen and is there ever an end to the Northern Plains Heritage Foundation? Well, yeah. I mean, any, any not-for-profit can, can dissolve. I guess if we were, I think it's the goal to be self-sustaining, in other words, to have participating entities and, you know, like yeah. money, money flow and grants and people and working and so forth. But if it doesn't happen, then, then we would we would dissolve my system. But I won't be on the board of that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Could you speak into the microphone a little bit? Uh, you, you, you're in a lot of Okay, sorry. I also yeah. have a kind of a cough and a sore throat, and I'm still standing back every once in a while because I'm coughing. I don't want to do that with everybody. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Mary Greener, and we live down across from Greener Park, right next to the Indian Village site. Um, a little background: that land was taken away from the family in 1950s for flood control. We're still waiting for the water to come up. It just hasn't gotten there yet. We thought maybe it would this year. It still has, but the government has that land. But, um, my husband's great-grandfather had settled. Anyway, I was at a meeting up in Stanton in May, I believe. Um, it was the Sue Pridemore, it was a teleconference. She was the National Park Service. And there, it, it was just ironic that there's a gentleman there who's a Park Service um, employee, his name is Mark Perkle, and he was listed as an ex-officio of the board. Anyway, Mark 
had absolutely no idea he was on the board. He'd never heard about it. He'd never received an email or a letter that he was even on the board. He was listed as a member, so I find that very surprising. That, that's, that's easy to fix. It's okay. not the same guy. Doug Purple is the state parks director, and he knows he's on the board. He's attended meetings, and he sends staff to them. Well, the so so Mr. Long Mark Purple, he's not part of the board. Maybe that's I got why the first mixed up, Mr. Potter, but it was Purple, and he was at the meeting, and that would be a right. Right, but I'm saying Doug Purple knows he's on the board. He attends the meetings and has attended them. Right well, this gentleman was said. listed, and he wasn't. He had no idea. One of the... Um, Things people talk about view shed, you guys say we have no idea what's going to happen in the future. There's a lot of wind energy going on, and we've all heard of the three force formation, which is larger than the um, formation of the Williston. And right now, um, they're looking in the areas as to oil drilling. And so, we do have a lot of concerns about maybe it's not in the plan now, but it can be written in later about these view sheds. And I think we all have a right to be worried about that, especially when we have people like um, with on the Sierra, with the Sierra Club on your board. We have very big reasons for concern here. Um, I just have, a, I'll be real brief, I just have a question. <coughs> if I understand correctly, um, the board basically gets to pick and choose the board members that are given to you, is that correct? Yes. Yes, okay. So then the foundation or the board will be writing the rules as to how to obtain a grant, is that correct? Yes. Okay, then how is it like such as yourself, Mr. Potter, as a member of Fort Abraham Lincoln, how can you, you know, request a grant and perhaps award yourself a grant? Well, we haven't done it yet. Well, I understand that um, that you keep talking about Fort There's Abraham Lincoln and Fort Mann as well. Sure. When we wrote the bylaws, we put in a, a conflict of interest policy, which basically requires it, us to disclose, uh, just as, as we do in the legislature, have to disclose any conflict of interest whether or not that affects the, uh, uh, the going ahead for it or not, and easily you know, uh, uh, choose not to vote on those kinds of things, so if that's what you want. Well, but, and, and that's a good comment for the management plan, absolutely. telling us how to do it. Because and, the, the, the board has been hand-chosen by yourselves. People that want to get on the board can't get on the board. Anyone who has negative feelings about this whole area can't get on the board because you guys are hand Sarah's too polite to say this, but you know, we, uh, uh, you, you should know the, the facts on that. We asked, the, we asked the Stockman's Association, we asked the Farmers Union, mm -hmm. and we asked the North Dakota Farm Bureau oh, to, oh, nominate, oh, to nominate, oh, to nominate oh, members to uh, uh, the board. The Stockman's Association uh, nominated members and we chose one. The, uh, the uh, North Dakota Farmers Union nominated and we chose one. The North Dakota Farm Bureau refused to uh, decline that. participation. Mm -hmm. When? One man, one vote? Pardon? Everybody does. Yeah, Sandy's standing up, but Sandy, we are very happy to have our viewers input, however you choose to provide it. And, um, you know, so we, we don't take your declination of a membership on the board as an expression of disinterest. I would just like to make known to these folks here, we chose not to participate because we choose to be a watchdog. And it's easier to be a watchdog when you're outside. Yeah. That's, that's fine. That's, that's a good approach. Yeah, and then, I guess, you know, getting down, um, I'll end right here. It's basically your management plan is all your hand-chosen people, the people that, you know, with the Sierra Club, with Fort Lincoln, with Fort Mann, and you're all sitting on the board, you're making the plan, you're making the rules, you're writing the rules, and you're doing the awards. You're the one that is going out there choosing who's going to get these grants and who isn't. Um, I, I find that very interesting. But if, and on that first page, it says, uh, who makes the decisions on how to invest the federal money? It's like the management plan gets to do that. But the public doesn't get to vote. You guys get to vote. So none of these people sitting here tonight get to vote on what you guys want to do. And that's what I have to Well, yeah, we, we're going to do our best to get as much public